All right, so we are on our Snapseed app. All you have to do is click the button in the center. It'll open up your pictures. I'm gonna open up my, my best shot I have of this piece. Um, if you're like me, you have 5,000 different photos of each one, so it gets a little hard to decide which one is really the best. But for me, it's not about um, necessarily the brightness in terms of the color being right on the walls or things like that. What's most important to me is that my furniture looks the right color and that it's very, very crisp and clear. I want a nice bright photo, but I want it to be crisp and clear. That way I can zoom in and it's not going to look blurry. The first thing I always do is hit tools and then crop. And you can do the preset ratios, you can pick your own, you can just freehand it. It depends on the size of my piece and the shape, depending on what I wanna do. Um, you can move this around, you just wanna make sure that you're nice and centered. So you've got these grid marks and you can actually center them on your handles because you know your handles are, cent are centered. So I want those marks to be even. Uh, so we're gonna put it right about there. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna hit the check mark. You just wanna make sure you have even space on your left and right sides and fairly amount or fairly even space above and below. The next thing I do, and like this is just my preference, you can totally come up with your own system and your own um, kind of method of how you do this, but this is what works best for me. I hit tools and then I do white balance. Now on this particular one, if you do the automatic white balance, it's gonna make it much more yellow because it was far more in the blue area. So you just kind of play around with it. You can swipe left and right and just kind of alter it just a bit. So I'm going to go just up a tiny bit, but then I'm not too worried about that blue on the left side or on the lower right because I'm actually going to change that individually. Sometimes this button will alter it enough overall that you're just good to go and it makes it a lot easier. So always try the easy stuff first before you get into the crazy detailed stuff. Hit the check mark. And then I'm gonna to hit tools again, and I go to tune image. This one, you can hit that little wand, see if it'll adjust it perfectly for you. This one made it go up a little bit in brightness. I don't like to use this very um, drastically. I don't want to crazy increase my brightness or contrast or saturation because it's going to increase and decrease it across the entire photo when maybe I only want um, my background wall to be brighter. I don't want to change the color of my furniture. So having a, a tool that basically adjusts the entire photo at one time sometimes isn't the greatest thing. It's good to do the automatic one and get a little more brightness across the board as long as your, your paint still looks like the correct shade, then you're good to go. Hit the check mark. And then my next thing, I do two more things that are on every single piece, no matter what. Hit tools and I do healing. Now this one, you have to be sure, you never wanna heal your actual furniture. Um, this piece has some little you know, crevices, little marks on it. I'm not gonna take those out at all because they're real. They're part of like, like this little mark under the drawer. I don't wanna erase that because I don't want my customer to get it and say, hey, I didn't know this was on there. Um, but my wall, I don't care about that. I just want it nice and crisp and clean. Nobody's going to come and judge that my staging wall doesn't look the way it's supposed to. So I'm just going to slide my hand down. Um, and you can kind of play around with this. Sometimes it adds in lines you don't necessarily want. So you have to kind of pay attention. I've seen some people edit their photos with this. And let's see if I can make it happen. If I go like that, you can see... See that right there? I added in a seam on the wall that wasn't there. So I'm gonna hit the back button. I don't wanna do that. And sometimes I've seen people not really pay attention and their edited photo has something else added in or they erased a light switch and actually added in another one on accident or half of one. Um, it's the quickest way to make your photo look edited and we want a great photo, but we don't want it to look like it's been edited because for a customer's perspective, an edited photo means that the piece is edited. They're not going to think in their brain, yeah, she edited the wall, but did she not edit the, the furniture? And you never want your customer to think that you're editing the paint color or altering that. Okay, so now all of our seams, I'm going to actually go back in with the healing one more time because I wanted to fix this up here. I'm just clearing out a little bit. I kind of swipe back and forth a lot. Um, it just had like a weird shadow on there. It's not the end of the world, but I don't really want it on there. 
And I will go back and forth between selective and healing quite a few times um, in my typical rundown. So I'm going to go to selective now. And now what this does is you have all the different options that you had with the, you know, tuning buttons, but you can do them in small portions. So if you can see on the left side of my screen, it's more blue. On the right, right side of my screen, upper portion, it's bright white. So I need to get the blue wall to look white. So what I'm going to do is you hit that plus mark on the bottom, and then you just pick a spot. You're going to tap, and it'll put a bit little button down. Now you can pinch your fingers in and out and decide just how much space you're going to be editing. What you'll notice is the corner of my dresser, the, the app is actually recognizing that that is a different color. So even if I went like this, it's not going to change the color of my dresser because it knows that that's a different piece. Um, I prefer to do them in somewhat small areas. If you notice when you're bigger like this, the edge of your little zone that you're working on is kind of blurry, which is good because you don't want to draw out a stick mark. If you go really low, it's a very obvious circle. Um, like if you were to do right here, I'll show you. You just have a bright white circle. So we don't want that. We want it to look natural. So I kind of go like this. And what I do, and this is just my preference, um, since the wall is kind of blue, if I were just to brighten it up, I'd have to go pretty bright to make it white. Otherwise, it's just bright blue. So go back down. I want to scroll up to saturation, and then I go to the left. Oh, I clicked it off. Hold on. Then we go to the left, and I'm going to take the saturation down. So I'm basically taking out all the color and making it a grayscale. So now, instead of a blue wall, I have a gray wall. Now I scroll back into brightness, and I can brighten it up a little bit without making it glaringly bright, and I'm getting rid of the blue. So I'm going to do the same down here. Saturation, put it down to a grayscale, brightness, brighten it up a little bit. And then I can do that on this side as well. But I don't need to do that on that top portion because that one was already pretty white. This is already fairly white. Now on this, I like to check mark every once in a while and then go back in and do it again. Um, I'm already grayscale, so I'm good, but I kind of, you know, slowly keep playing around with the brightness because I don't want it to be like crazy overexposed. Um, it's the quickest way to make your photo look super edited and you don't want an edited photo. You, you want it to look real. Um, you want it to look like it's in a magazine, but you don't want it to look ridiculous. So I'm just going to take these seams out because I'm not feeling them today. Sometimes, oh, do you see what I did? There's a blur. Hit the back mark. It'll just take it out. Sometimes I leave the seams in, sometimes I don't. Um, all right, I'm liking that so far. So the other thing I like to do is perspective. Now this is going to, it's different than rotating. Um, think of it as a 3D photo. And if you were to take your photo without really holding your camera properly, straight up and down, sometimes your photo can actually make it look like the dresser is tipping over on one side or it's tipping forward or it's tipping backwards. The quickest way to tell that, this one's a little harder because it's um, a curvy piece, but if you have a, a typical rectangular dresser, um, if the bottom is much wider than the top, it means your phone was crooked. So you can go ahead and do this and you can you can swing it around, you can make it look however you want. Now this, you don't want to distort your photo, but, and you can also go left and right too, like if you happen to be off. It's basically just fixing what you should have done in the photo when you were taking it. Um, but every once in a while I get a piece where I notice like the lines on my floor are crooked and it's because my camera was a little off, off kilter. So you can switch that up in here. So hit check mark again. And then normally I would go back through and keep playing with these. I would highlight little things. Um, you can go through and that center piece where there's a reflection there. I could, let's see, I can highlight that just a tiny bit. So I put that in the middle. I want to zone in right there, kind of brighten it up just a tiny bit. I don't want to change the color of my photo, but I don't want my reflection in the picture. picture. So... Next thing I do, you need to add a watermark. So hit tools, scroll down to text. Um, go, I like these basic ones at the beginning. This is the one I use the most. Um, so I'm just, you double tap and then you can type in your name, hit okay. And now you can put it down here. You can make it a little smaller. Um, it's, it's, 
up to you how you want to do this. Some people like to make that watermark very tiny and very discreet. Some like to make it across the entire piece. Some like to have it go across the feet of the dresser or something like that so it's not easy to crop out. I kind of figure it's more important that my piece looks good and if somebody steals it, they're gonna steal it. Um, I watermark my pieces just in case. It deters a lot of people but I'm not gonna put this on my piece because I don't wanna distract. I'd much rather sell my piece and have a customer see it and not be distracted than worry about somebody stealing my, my work. Sometimes though, I will put it like over the foot if I want or something like this where it's a little harder to crop. But what I really like to do for the most part, I have them centered typically. You can change the color of this, you can change the saturation. So I will do something like this, make it a little smaller. And then I like to lighten it up. So if you click that little droplet at the bottom, that's your opacity. You can kind of make it super faint. You can make it much brighter. I don't want it to be like the first thing people notice when they see my piece. So you can kind of put it over here. You can put it wherever you want. Just play around with it. I think you should get like a style and kind of stick with it for the most part. Make it your known thing. This is the one I use all the time. Um, and I think every time I do it, I have to stop and go, wait, which one do I do? So just kind of get used to it and make it your style. Um, these ones are just nice and basic. So you just put your name. So you hit the check mark and you're good to go. So now my photo looks pretty darn good. Uh, I haven't changed the color of my paint. I haven't changed the quality of my piece, but I just changed the background piece. So nobody knows that it was in my garage with two, you know, pieces of four by eights. I'm going to do one more quick thing because this little, oh, see, I accidentally swiped, so I'm going to hit back. This little piece of dust is bugging me. <laughs> all right, now we're better. So after that, you just hit export and you're done. It'll save all of it for you and put it right in your photo album. And that's it. It's super easy. Your photo is protected. It looks better. You've got your watermark on there and you're ready to rock. So hope that helped, guys. Thanks.